Hey guys, it's Reeker from Cut Through Recordings, and welcome back to part three of Mixing Metalcore Revisited. Today we're going to be talking about guitars and guitar tone, and uh, so first I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of where we left off, what we got so far. We just have the drums and the bass. Okay, so um, that's what we're working with right now. Um, first off, there are a lot of guitar tracks in this song. Uh, starting out, I'm just going to worry about the rhythm guitars, so I'm going to turn all these down, and uh, I'll go ahead and gradually bring in the clean guitars so you can kind of hear what they sound like DI. Okay, so um, that's what we're working with. I keep forgetting that if I solo my track, it cuts out my voice. So uh, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, solo one of the guitars, and uh, we're gonna work on just getting an okay sounding guitar tone. Okay, um, a lot of people say not to not to ever solo anything, but you at least need to get a decent guitar tone before you start mixing it. At least in my opinion. So um, I'm gonna try to use uh, all free plugins for this. Uh, this is pretty much all I ever use anyway, so I'm going to grab TSC-808, TSC-X50, and we're going to use Kiefer Mono, and um, that's going to cut out the guitar until we get a good impulse load in here. Um, let's see, I'm going to use the McRich IR pack, which is uh, I got for free off of the Andy Snoop forum. I'll see if I can find a link to that, and I can put it in the video, Put it. well, put it below the video. And I believe it was the 57 that I was using. Man. like the sound of these DIs. Um, <clears throat> they're very fizzy, so let's mess around with some different uh, impulses. So, so just fizzy sounding. Um, <clears throat> I've got some other impulses around here I can try out. Uh, okay, so um, I'm back. It turns out that that was a really stupid amateur mistake of me. I actually had the uh, impulse loader I forgot to rearrange everything. The impulse loader was uh, in front of the tube screamer uh, instead of being after the amp like it should be. So um, make sure it doesn't happen to you. Uh, I feel pretty stupid about that one. Uh, anyways, moving on. I'm going to go back and try this uh, impulse here. This has always been one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I like that. It's, uh, it's very beefy sounding. I know I use that term a lot. But, uh... Okay. So, uh... Guitar tone, it's, it's all about taste. Uh, there's no good guitar tone. Well, I mean, there is good... Um, there's... It's hard to really judge what is a good guitar tone and what isn't, because it's different for everybody. Um, I'd say the best thing you can do is listen to a song you really like and uh, try to sort of reference it and match it the best you can. Maybe uh, maybe um, have someone who you really like their mixes, have them reamp guitars for you, and then maybe you can try to copy it yourself and figure out how they did it. Um, but anyways... Um, I think this is a decent starting point right here. It's pretty punchy, got a lot of mids going on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this over to uh, the other track here. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm going to unsolo this, put it back to um, left, oops. Did not mean to do that. Need to pull this thing back down here. If it'll let me. 
Okay, I'm back again. Uh, got that figured out. Had that happen before, but it, uh, because of the recording window that I'm using, it was uh, really hard to uh, get the mixer back down here. Anyways, um, going to go back. Now we got the uh, guitars. We have the uh, tone copied to um, the other side now, so uh, our guitars should be sounding fairly decent. Okay, I'm um, liking that. Uh, I usually, uh, most of the time, I end up, uh, m some people may uh, disagree with this, but a lot of times I just end up using the same tone for uh, my lead tracks as well. Um, I usually EQ it a little bit differently, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this to these uh, tracks as well. Uh, let's see here. That, guitar center. Don't even know why there's a center guitar, but okay. Um, let's see. Got that. So now we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and we can pull these up as well. So bring all these in, and we'll try to sort of balance it out. Here's one of my favorite tricks uh, with leads, is uh, it's, it's a free plugin called Twin Delay, uh, made by Rhythm Lab, and um, it's really useful. It basically, it uh, delays the signal differently in the left and right channel. I mean, you can find these, uh, you can find stereo delays, there's there's lots of them, but uh, this is a free one that I've become accustomed to and I use it a lot, so um, I'll go ahead and show you what this does to a lead. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to uh, do a little bit of EQing on the guitars because uh, I feel that there's a little bit that can be taken away. Uh, I believe it's in the higher mids is what I'm hearing. It'll let the bass stick through a little bit more and I think it'll uh, sort of help the two glue together a little bit better. See what I'm, how that uh, makes a difference there. The, the bass and guitar fit a lot better together this way. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to do on the guitars, I uh, recently I found that I really like uh, putting a uh, multiband compressor on here. So I'm going to use Reex Comp, which comes with uh, Reaper, and I'm just going to I'm just going to sort of crush each band uh, individually. So um, first, I'm going to set this. Uh, let's see, 20 to 20 to 200 hertz. That's probably pretty good. Uh, we want uh, 200 to yeah, that's about good too. There's really not a whole lot of adjusting that needs to be done here. Okay, so um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna turn off auto makeup gain on all of these channels because we want to set that ourselves. Now I'm gonna bring down. Uh, okay, so this is uh, affecting low mids here, and uh, let's see, we're getting about around average around four decibels gain reduction. So uh, now I'm going to go over here to the gain and I'm going to put that back up around 4 and see, uh, sort of add that low end back in that we just uh, crushed. So uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the high mids. So we're averaging around like 2.6. Do that up here in the highs. Let's do that about 2.7, and uh, we'll crush the low end as well. Now, uh, <laughs> if we bypass this, we shouldn't hear any really much difference. Uh, frequency response wise okay good there's there's a little bit but uh for the most part you really, really can't tell whenever you bypass that and uh, I noticed that um to me it like <clears throat> to me it sounds like uh, the guitars they just have a lot more oomph to them it, it just gives them a lot more power so uh that's why I've been doing that lately uh, so try it out and see how you like that And it's important to make sure that you get this right right here, uh, the, the uh, gain. You want to go off of, try to get an average of uh, the amount of gain reduction you're getting, and you want to try to put that back so that way nothing, nothing really changes totally. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, back up here to the EQ, and uh, we're going to try to cut a little bit. Um, first off, we're going to want to we're going to want to high pass uh, around 100 hertz. So uh, set that about right there. Uh, going to turn that guy off for a little bit. Go over here, and we're going to low pass, and we're going to set that to around uh, 10, 10 or 11 k. And uh, I'm going to make that slope a little bit steeper, so we aren't losing too much of our height in there. And uh, <clears throat> now we want to do the do the usual thing. We want to go back and uh, we want to try to find out what instruments are competing with the guitars. And in the case of guitars, at least distorted electric guitars, it's everything's fighting with them. So um, we're gonna first we're gonna try to we're gonna cut here around 5k, make room for the uh, snap of the snare. Um, it may not be exactly 5k. You'll have to listen. Uh, Um, we're gonna also, we're gonna go around here, we're gonna cut, the base should be setting around 250, so we're gonna, we're gonna make a little dip there, make room for the low end of that base, well I guess, yeah, low mids. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna make.
make this uh, cut a little bit steeper. And uh, we're going to add one also around 200 for the snare again. bypass this and make sure we aren't doing too much damage. Alright, so um, that's about it right now for the guitars, so um, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll move on to the next video, which will be, uh, I'll probably go ahead and cover scream vocals first, and then after that we'll do clean vocals. Um, then we'll probably either move on to effects or mastering, probably mastering because uh, the effects are pretty much already taken care of for this song. We may uh, see about doing some glitches or something like that, and... Uh, that should be about it. Like I said, there will also be a video, actually probably before the mastering video, where I will just go back, listen through everything, and make sure that uh, everything's the way we need it, because obviously we're going to have to make some tweaks, otherwise uh, it won't sound right, because you can't just magically get everything right right off the bat unless you're just a master. So um, that that's what's to come for this. Uh, like I said, um, don't take everything I do as the way to do it, because I'm still learning myself. Um, I'm just still just an amateur at this, but uh, I just want to show with you or share with you guys the way the way that I do things, and uh, hopefully to help you out. And uh, like I said, I'm open to suggestions. So um, I hope you guys like this. If you do, click like below and uh, maybe subscribe to my channel. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.